for each of the tables in 18 through 21, construct a Boolean expression having the given table as its truth table, and B, a circuit having the given table as its input output table. So this is a great question because solving part B kind of requires you to solve part A anyways first. And there's a really cool way of solving part A using this table. The key to solving this problem is to identify when the output signal is one. If the inputs are aligned in a certain way, we can get the output to be one under these three circumstances. So under these three different circumstances for our input signals, we can get an output signal of one. What are those three circumstances? Well, first, it's when P equals 1, Q equals 1, and R equals 0. So let's talk about this assumption. These input signals will give an output of 1 if we negate R. So if we take P and Q and not R, then this expression will be true precisely when P is 1, Q is 1, and R is 0. So this statement form allows us to fix the output to be one if we have very specific input signals for P, Q, and R. There's only one way to make this statement form true. But as we said, there are three different circumstances for which the output signal could be one. So either we could have this assumption or we might have a different set of input signals that would give an output signal of one. And that's precisely when P is false so not P, which would be one, and Q is true, or Q is one, and R is one. So under this specific set of assumptions where P is false, Q is true, and R is true, then the output of the statement form would be true. So if either of these assumptions are made, then we would have an output of one for our S. Lastly, these three inputs could also give us an output signal of one. And that's precisely when P is false, or when not P is true, and Q is true, or Q is one, and R is false, which it will say is not R. So now we can see clearly that under any of these three very specific circumstances, the output will be one, because with the OR operation, if any of your inputs is true, then the whole output is true. So this is the solution to part A. Now let's build the circuit from this statement form. We're gonna have three signals, P, Q, and R. We're also gonna have three AND operations that each take in three inputs. Okay, so for the first AND gate at the top here, we're gonna do P and Q and not R. So I'm gonna take my input signal from P, and I'm gonna combine that with Q, and now I need a not R, so I'm gonna first have to negate R with a not gate, and then I can feed that signal to my AND gate. So that's my first AND gate. My second AND gate, I need not P, Q, and R. So first I'm gonna split the input signal of Q right here and feed that into the second AND gate. I'll need the input signal for R. We can't steal it from this spot right here because right here is technically not R since it's the output of this not gate. And so we're going to need to split R at the input before the not gate. And then we'll feed that signal into my second AND gate. Lastly, we need the negation for P. So I'm gonna make a split at the input of P and then I'm gonna feed that through a not gate. And so now I have not P here and I'll feed that not P into this second AND gate. Okay, so now we have two AND gates ready to go. Now we need to build the last one, which is the blue, where we need not P and Q and not R. Now, not P is right here. We can bring that down with a split. And just remember, every time you see wires that are overlapping, but there's no circle, that means that that overlap is not an actual physical overlap, but that these wires are wrapped underneath each other in such a way that they don't interfere when you don't have closed circles for splits. Okay, so we have not P, next we need Q. We can create a split right here. And next we need not R, which we can get right here with a split. 
Okay, so now that we've built our three AND gates, each with three inputs, we can join these three outputs together with an OR gate. And the OR gate has a curved section for the inputs. 